I was talking to a friend this week and she's going through a really hard time. She is divorced and she's having some custody issues. And it's so challenging when there are so many elements that you can do nothing about, right? You can do nothing about the fact that someone else has your kids half the time. You can do nothing about the laws that are already in place. Um, so you do the best you can with what you have. Um, but sometimes it's super important for us to feel like we can do something about something. Um, I remember after I had experienced a really big loss, um, when I went back to work, uh, all I could do was label boxes. That's kind of all I could do. I mean, I could create categories, but my brain was just so wiped that I just, I actually felt better and more at ease just by labeling boxes. And so this week, what I was really realizing is just how important organizing is on a therapeutic level. It's it is about making sure your space looks good and setting yourself up for success and making sure that you are able to do the things that you want to do um, without being encumbered by stuff. But it also can be therapeutic to just be able to give your attention and time to something that you actually can do something about. You know, right now, anytime I turn on the news, I almost immediately turn it off because there are so many things I can't do anything about and I feel so stressed and it will literally cause me to freeze in panic. Um, so in those moments, that's when we have to start looking for something that we can do something about. And that's where organizing comes in. And it's a magical thing that I see each and every day. Um, it's why the process of therapeutic organizing works because you have this little activity that you can do and it tricks your brain. So, so imagine this, so you're feeling stressed out in your life, you're feeling overwhelmed in your life, right? Say you take out that junk drawer that's, that's needing love um, and you dump everything out and you just create categories, right? Uh, old batteries here, pens and pencils there, ties from bread boxes there. Um, you, bread boxes, what, what is this, the 1920s? I don't even know what a bread box is anymore. Uh, bread bags. Um, you separate everything by category and then, and then you evaluate from there, right? Already, your brain is just going on fire because you're giving it something to do that it can do something about. It can complete the task. Dopamine starts firing your brain. You get some feel-good hormones coursing through your veins. Um, it is really a beautiful way to kind of trick yourself into feeling a little bit better because you're doing something that you can do something about. You may not be able to control the world, the planet, politics, your ex-husband, your custody agreement, but you can create a category. You can label a box. You can clean a drawer. You can clean a dish. Pick something in this moment that you can do something about. Now, it, it, it isn't hiding. It actually is like allowing you to step up. It's going from a place of disempowerment into a place of empowerment because you're giving yourself something that you can do and you're starting to see the potential of what's possible and you slowly start to grow. So you are always retraining your brain to look for the thing that is easy to do, that is possible for you to do, and that will impart some sort of change in your life at this moment, even if it's not related to the thing that you're most stressed about. You just need to give your brain, your body, your soul, your mind just a break from the stress of all the things you can't control. And just taking a second to do something that you can control can really help you to feel more empowered, stronger, more at ease every single day of your life.